Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and you may notice that on the, what we call, I guess, the full collection or the regular CGB videos, um, trying to highlight different decks in Magic, you m that are the account that is not free to play, in a nutshell. You might notice that there's a little editing going on and a little more pizzazz. We're testing out some things. I'm going to try to keep this uh, channel, the Young CGB channel, still the straight up one take. Let's get in there. Let's do our thing. Let's play our games. You see the good, the bad, and the ugly. So hopefully uh, you enjoy that. I thought I should say that up front, but here we are in another week and we're looking at a variety of cards here. Cards. Quests. Uh, kill 15 creatures, cast 20 white or green spells, and attack with 30 creatures. So the only one of these that's color specific is right here. So I'm gonna try rerolling it for a 750. And we do get a 750. So that's a reroll for the day and we did it. We need 30 white or blue spells. White or blue spells. I don't know if we've done anything with a white and blue deck. We could just do the blue side, but what fun is that? Let's, I say I'm always gonna try to build different decks here on the show, let's do it. Now, when I think white and blue, I think control. Um, I absolutely think control. I don't actually believe I have any Teferis at all. So that's a problem and probably not going to, not gonna, it's probably not gonna work out to be totally honest. <laughs> but I can have a look. I can always have a look. Like, how bad of a white-blue control that can I try to build with the collection that I have right now? <laughs> of course, we could turn it into a mill deck. We have Drown Secrets. We have Drown Secrets, my friends. Maybe it's a mill deck. Oh, God. I think it might be a mill deck. The baby is born, the parents are happy, and then the doctor looks at them and says, it's a mill deck. And then there is much sobbing. <laughs> there is much pain. No, no, he didn't want this. This is not the way it should be. <laughs> of course, we can put some Tesserets in there. They can draw some cards, but they can also, um, Two Azores. Why not? We have Dream Eaters and Nezahals and a River's Rebuke. What a ridiculous pile. We may get crushed, but I sure am gonna... I, I, I'm gonna somehow, in a twisted way, enjoy it, I think. I wonder if Memorial to Glory just to make some blockers is a good play. Probably not, though. Um, is there like evolving wilds? Do we get those for free? Doesn't look like it. Okay. Well, <laughs> we filled the deck. We got to 66 cards. And also I like to play more lands when I play control decks. It's almost automatic that I go up to like 26-ish land when I play control decks now. Um, let's see. I don't want to be all in on mill. It's just, it's mill. It'll let you down. So running one Drown Secrets as a potential win con, I think makes sense. I don't think we need the Spell Pierce. We have a ton of counters as it is. And the chart, of course, doesn't really make sense. We have Divination, things of that nature. And as you see, our two drop spots are very full. We don't have a lot. We don't have much in the board wipe area at all with just Settle the Wreckage. We're gonna have to counter freaking everything. Cover up, you can go. I'm not a fan of the card. And probably a Dream Eater, since I don't think those quite fit in, since we've already got all these six drops, like Azer. Did I, didn't I have two of you? I'm gonna get in two, two Azers. We're gonna go for the Sphinx's Revelation style. And that should be plenty of win cons. I don't know if with River's Rebuke belongs, but I'm gonna try it out anyway. It's kind of a tempo card where you rebuke them and win, then win the game because it was large board versus large board. Anyway, blue-white control. Who wants to run this yard? Mystic Archaeologist, go run this yard for me. 
Lots of card draw, not a lot of removal. I don't know what I'm hoping to get paired against. But with all that card draw, perhaps we can complete the quest very quickly. Super budget blue-white. No to fairy. Best planeswalker in the game? Nah. Nah, don't need him. We don't want this on easy mode, thank you. Hmm. Well, if we draw any land, we can divinate, and that might, like, I've heard it, you might have heard it said somewhere. Maybe not, if this is your first time hearing it. It's just truth. Just accept it. But I didn't say it first. Card draw is mana fixing. If you draw enough of your deck, you'll eventually fix your mana. Well, two six drops. And our one sweeper, which is a big reason why I'm keeping it. So that we can recover. All right. Also, just getting lucky fixes your mana. Now that I said. That one's all that one's all me. Yep, let's just start holding Essence Scatter up to our opponent. They might be a Drake type thing, or they might we're, we're playing like pure Jeskai control. That's that's obnoxious. <laughs> Alright. We don't have to ferry, but we have to fight against a ferry. Hey, they missed a land. Maybe this Neza Hall will do something. So I could go for the divination, they'd likely counter it. I think I'll wait at least one turn before I try to divinate them. Okay, they're going to mission briefing for the surveil because they want to make sure that they find some land on top of their deck. They have cleansing Nova and they keep one. So there's their land. They did it. All right, now they're probably thinking about casting something like a chemist's insight. So I will try to play a divination, see? And now we're just racing, racing in our lands. Uh, I can keep two mana up. My opponent might play around a syncopate or something like that, so maybe it's a good idea, but I also have a chance to play my Drowned Secrets. So, lol, let's do it. And see if the opponent just slams a Teferi on us. A Rowl. Well, if we top deck a land, we're gonna feel really good. I just wanna peek. Wait is killing me. If we don't, er, all right. Uh, so I'm going to bounce this with kicker, draw a card, nail the opponent. Goodbye, Clarion and Drake. And we are really trying to draw into another land because if we do, life is pretty good because we slam the immortal sun on the raw. But if we don't, oh, well, that's unfortunate. And I've got all these cards that do nothing. Fun. Nothing like getting a little bit mana screwed against a control, a fellow control mage. So I'm sure they would like to replay Rawl, and they do. Um, I could disdainful stroke the Rawl. I guess I will. My opponent does get to draw a card from it, which is unfortunate. But I get to mill you, so who's really winning this game? The answer, in case you missed it, is the opponent. <laughs> Signs indicate that that hurt. All right, seal it away. Opponent says nice, and we still don't draw land. Life is hard. Mill you. Maybe I should be milling myself, because obviously there's no land in my top 20 cards. But this is it. If we draw one, we're in good shape. Because as long as it's untapped, it has to be an untapped land. We can slam the Immortal Sun. Maybe our opponent can't deal with it. Maybe. Maybe. Ah, gross. Choose wisely, because the other one's going bye-bye. Yep. I'm sure you've got all the counters your heart desires. Well, we see two sabotages, two missing briefings, negate. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they have all the counters their heart desires. Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? I mean, they're never going to tap out again. So we just have to throw cards at them and fail.
There is something to be said for them. If they can't deal with the drown secrets, the raw ultimate might cause them to deck themselves trying to kill us. And there's still a Neza Hall, but a raw minus I think would kill it at this point. There's so many spells in the graveyard. If we find a Crackling Drake, it's a giveaway. Yeah, 15. Raw can just minus and kill it. And that card can kill us. How many counters you got? All of them, of course. Uh, we can concede there because the Crackling Drake's going to have 16 power. So we lost because we couldn't draw lands in our deck full of cantrips and 26 lands. Life is sometimes absolutely cruel. Our opponent definitely had a better deck than us, but I think we had a good chance with the cards we had if we just drew some mana. That's, that's magic, my friends. At least we had an opponent who played quickly for a control mage. You can always thank your lucky stars when that happens. Well, is this another... Is this the same thing? Okay, it looks like some kind of white aggro. That's different. That is different. So we can play the archaeologist. Which might be wise against a very aggressive deck. I'm not sure. I don't think sealing this away is a good play, but radical idea might be the right play. Just to get us deeper and deeper. So I think I'll sit on radical ideas since I don't plan to block with the archaeologist. All right, they're passing the turn. All right, let's do this again. Maybe I will seal that away if they don't have more pressure. Green mana. I know our elves. Awkward. I'm going to counter it in case my opponent really needs double green. And the opponent didn't do anything with um, they did not do anything with three with three white last turn. Hmm. I do need the land, but I really didn't want a tapped one. Am I being too greedy if I put this away? Maybe. I'll take the risk though. Tap lands is such a can be such a hindrance, but we lucked out on this one. I think we can play you now. We have a disdainful stroke to protect you with. And if our opponent does nothing, we can seal away the Sky Marcher. Another elf, yep. And a Tashar. Whenever you cast a historic spell, return a creature with converted mana cost three or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. But we can't have much of that going on. We better shut that down before creatures start coming back. It's hard enough to kill them the first time. Alright, 14 life. A couple ways to affect the board. Let's see what our opponent wants to do. We have another one. Gross. So I haven't played against a Tashar deck too much. Okay, they're both attacking. Let's, um, blink of an eye this. Let's see what card we draw. Do I want to trade to my archaeologist? Because next turn we could seal away the Llanowar Elf, cut their mana off, or play a Tezzeret. I think next turn we're going to play Tezzeret and start ticking it up, so let's just let these hit. The archaeologist could still be the gasoline for the late game. I, I have constructed your doom. Bam. Let's punch. Let's punch him with the archaeologist. So many elves. The return of Tashar. 
Would you dare attack Tezzeret here? It will simply make more. I guess Tashar plans to get them back from the graveyard, but there we go. This nonsense. <laughs> nonsense. It is the ideal subordinate. Now again, our opponent's probably waiting to cast something historic to get these back. Let's go ahead and kicker bounce to Char so they have to spend another turn casting to Char. And we will pass the turn. Every turn that they have to spend recasting it is a turn they're not taking advantage of it. Or at least that's the theory. Well, elves, you coming? You want some little elves? No? All right, let's uh, opt. Don't need you. Let's radical idea. I don't need you. Here's all that land. We got seven in the graveyard. Let's keep making thopters to block the opponent's little critters. Play you. And pass that turn. And now we'll probably get to see what Tashar does. I, I assume our opponent has their deck built around this for a reason, and they have some historic cards to get back their Sky Marchers and Elves. But so far we've only seen three cards. Sky Marcher, Tashar, and Llanowar Elves. There's gotta be more to the deck. What could it be? Sarah's Guardian, 5-5, five, five, Flying Vigilance, other creatures have Vigilance. That is very unfortunate when you run Seal away to give Vigilance to all your critters. Hmm. I'm going to draw two cards, get some information about what more we can do with our hand. Ooh, settle the wreckage. Yeah, if I double block and kill this, my opponent's more likely to attack with more things next turn, which means a great settle the wreckage, rather than trying to preserve my Thopter count. Opponent might charge in with a lot of things. That is fine. We definitely appear to be against a creature deck. This will keep an eye on you. And pass the turn? Yes. Sit here with our instant speed effects. Get ready to hammer the opponent with Settle the Wreckage. Lots of green. Shalai? Well, we have to counter that or else the Settle the Wreckage can't resolve because it targets a player. Exile all creatures target player controls. Shalai? Uh, all Planeswalkers, other creatures, and you, meaning the other player, has Hexproof. Hexproof means we can't target him. All right. We could chump block and wait for something else, but let's just get him settled. Settle down now. And my turn, let's cast the Chemist's Insight because our goal is to cast spells, not activate his contas. Or our quest, I should say. My device is finished, as are you. Send in the archaeologist. Cards are falling from the ceiling right now, but with the archaeologist, we can draw four cards, so I'm going to just hold up all of my mana rather than play something like a divination. Lyra the Dawnbringer. Well, Seal Away can answer it. Seal Away can answer it, so we'll let Lyra resolve. Tezzeret's about to ultimate something I've never done. Could be fun. You block us. My turn. So many cards. I almost don't want to draw more cards. It's kind of awkward with the uh, emblem. At the beginning of your end step, search your library for a permanent and put it onto the battlefield. Could, could be awkward, because if the cards are in my hand, my 
<laughs> what do I do? <laughs> All right, well, let's get the win cons rolling. Let's search up uh, a permanent card. As you see, we have many, many choices. I'm a big fan of Azor the Lawbringer. Bigger than Elyra. Gains life, draws a million. The opponent will scoop. <laughs> enough, enough they say. And that's the kind of glorious jank fun you should have with your silly quest decks. Mm. That's doing it proper. Necro Necro. I Necro being a card from Ice Age, Necropotence. Very famous in magic lore because there was a time where cards, you just didn't know what they did until they did them and you were like, oh my god. That's the greatest card in the world. That was Necro. Basically let you pay one life to draw a card as much as you wanted. You had to skip your draw step. And you had to wait until the end step of your turn. It's a weirdly worded card. Look up the card Necropotence if you never have. It's, And then imagine reading that for the first time. The first uh, ever starter deck of Ice Age I bought had a Necropotence in it. I had no idea what it did. I was so confused. Hey, this looks like the deck we played last time. I guess we'll sit back with an Essence Scatter. Won't help against a Carnage Tyrant, though, if that should be what happens. Ooh. Well, this game is probably lost. Let's work on casting those spells. Would you like to see what's left? The wilds are my shield. Would you like to see a dead body? It's a joke from a movie. Stand by me. Stephen King. All uh, right. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep casting my spells and trying to, like, I don't think we can possibly keep up. So I'm just gonna try to knock out as many spells as I can. <laughs> they turn three Vivian readed us on the play and we didn't have an easy answer. We don't have an easy answer. And now it's a carnage tyrant. So this is a joke. Another joke of a game. Welcome to magic. Um, I guess I'll seal away the elf and then maybe essence scatter. But I guess what I have to do to actually compete here is draw settled wreckage and the land, which seems really unlikely, but I suppose I'll leave up chemistry's insight then. No one knows the wilds like I do. Maybe we can also draw a blink of an eye and put off Vivian just ultimating and smashing our face that way. Yeah, I need to draw cards here. I have to take all this beats and draw cards. It's the only way to prolong the game. A certain amount of games, my friends, will be jokes. No way you could win. Accepting that is an annoying part of magic, but it is true. Well, I gotta bounce you, and then I guess I can divinate, and then I die. Seven, yeah, I can't live, so I should just bounce you and play another spell and call it a day. Three spells to go. It is important to embrace, embrace your goal. Embrace the questing goal. It's not about winning, it's about getting your 750 gold. You're the rat in the maze and you wanna do free to play, you have to prioritize doing your quests. You can't expect to win while you do them. Not on free-to-play. When you do, it's nice. 
You get to do silly stuff with like Azor's gateway and such, you know? Oh, I said Azor's gateway. I meant Azor the Lawbringer. Okie dokie. Deck might need more planes. Maybe I'm just way too high on the island count. Some people probably saw that when I was building it. We just don't have that many good white spells. But we do need double white to even threaten Settle the Wreckage, which is like a spell all its own. The, the threat of Settle. Okay. I'm done too. Yeah, that's fine. Super slow-mo opting. Let's just say no to the Electromancer. No, thank you. Rather not get behind that particular threat. And here is my divination. Keep me gassed up. I need it. <laughs> I need a lot of gas to battle these. Is it decks? They just draw so many cards. They see so many cards. Our hand is hecka expensive with 6-6 six, six, and probably a 5 or a 6. Yep. It's at least a 5 to use an entrancing melody here. And now the question is, how many counter spells does our opponent run? But the good news is what we can do here is seal away on end step, untap, entrancing melody if our opponent does have counter spells. But we gotta take this first hit. We could try to seal away during the combat, but I like waiting till the end step and see if my opponent will commit anything else to the field. They're gonna go for chart, of course. Anything else? Tormenting voice. All right, well, I think maybe it's better if I take control of this drake than seal it away. The maximized velocity in the graveyard implies that I might be hit by a hasty drake in the future. And I might be able to put a good amount of spells into the graveyard too. So we'll go to my turn. And I have to tap out here, which is meh. But our opponent will have to find another threat. And if they tap out for maximized velocity drake right now, we can seal it away on our turn. And then have counter magic. Yep, here it comes. So there's the trick, but it's not huge. Seven, seven's an ouch, but it's not game over like you often want that trick to be. So let's shut it down while our opponent's tapped out. Now, afterwards, because of things like Arclight Phoenix, 11 life, should we attack? Um, I think I will for now. We do have to get them dead. Uh, given time, they'll draw their whole deck and have a million Arclight Phoenix and a million Crackling Drakes. But for right now, let's just shut down this Enigma Drake. Okay, they probably don't have cards like Sinister Sabotage or Ionize. Playing the land first even to bluff it would be smart. So probably not a counterspell deck. My Drake decks often do not have counterspells in them. Radical Idea discarded a Tormenting Voice. Like I said, just digging digging their whole deck. Um, let's send in the Drake. Let's send out Tezzeret to make some flyers to do some blocking here. There was definitely an option as well of the Immortal Sun. River's Rebuke, not so much an option. Leaving up Disdainful Stroke. I like the idea of next turn being able to resolve Immortal Sun and leave up Disdainful Stroke. And our opponent shocks the Thopter. So, do they have another big hit here for us? Nine. Oh my. Looks like they do. Maybe it was too aggressive to attack with that Drake. 
You do have to get used to this deck just punking you out of nowhere. So all they have to do is discard another spell to their maximized velocity and it's enough. But they discarded a land. And they're not attacking me. Enough! So their hand must be all land, but even then, don't you don't you get rid of the radical idea first? No, their hand is not all land. <laughs> Heads up everybody. They missed lethal. Alright. Well, now I need to think about blocking, or I need to River's Rebuke. How much do I have? I have eight, so I can stroke. I can Disdainful Stroke it on the way back. Awkward, but you do what you can, because I might be able to... Well, they're still at 13. It's very unlikely I can turn around and win. I also lose to counter magic from my opponent. This will go to six. This pushes it to seven. If we draw a spell that we can play... We can win the game next turn. They are thinking. Sure. No. All right. Six, Immortal Sun seven. We draw a spell. Like an opt, even a lowly opt, you can win this game. Hold on to your butts. Not a spell. And I kinda, I think the Drake has to stay home. If, as soon as I find one more, which Search for His Kanta is good at, we can attack for a lethal. But if we're not attacking for a lethal, I probably need to defend myself. Radical idea, discarding shock. Man, our opponent really missed lethal that turn. Doesn't look like they lacked for anything. Okay. Quasi-duplicate an Electromancer. Nice. Double quasi-duplicate an Electromancer. One card left, though. Do they have a lightning strike? Yeah. Um, so I'd probably let that damage through and not risk it even when they say good game and leave. I don't trust. I'm not good at trust. All right. Did it. Now we can uh, get back into our constructed event and play that Demir deck, which is sitting at five wins and one loss and see what kind of rewards we can get. Carnophage, I played yesterday, but I don't remember what they were playing. I think it might have been a Drake thing. It's hard to remember. But we have Thought Erasure and the Thief of Sanity into Contempt. We're on the draw. If we were on the play, this would be a very good hand. On the draw, we might get run over. Especially by turn one, Llanowar Elves. Uh, you can disable emotes if you don't feel like being chatty. So you can just hit that check mark and you don't have to worry about it anymore. And they keep the Assassin's Trophy on top. How unfortunate. So now if I play Thief of Sanity, they'll draw the Assassin's Trophy next turn and they can use it. I suppose I should still Thought Erase them. Vivian Reed, Chupacabra, Secret Squire. Yeah, let's take Vivian away. Disdainful Stroke. Can counter a Chupacabra, but not much else. So I guess I'll bin it. Awkward. Wish I had known that ahead of time. Stars are not lining up for me right this minute. I'm gonna need one of those rituals to set, so I think next turn will be a discovery turn. Playing Thief of Sandy will just get killed. There isn't too much to think about here. You're playing Seeker Squire and you're attacking. Okay, our opponent keeps a Midnight Reaper. They don't have double black for the Chupacabra. So I am going to play the Thief of Sanity just because they don't have, they will have to trophy it 
and they can't chupa it yet. That way I can at least get another land. I could also trade it. Yeah, the opponent's offering a trade. I can take that, since the thief is likely to get blown up anyway. And the opponent didn't play the Midnight Reaper first. They wanted the option to kill the thief, so they were definitely going to trophy it. I may as well get something off the board for my trouble. So, exiling the Midnight Reaper is good. We don't have to do that right away. We can wait. Opponent does draw their other black source. Here they come. Vraska's Contempt target Midnight Reaper. Just waiting until we enter the attack step in case there's decisions to be made. When we exile it, the opponent doesn't get to draw a card from it dying, which is why it's such a target. The two life will buffer us a bit, and then we can start the disinformation campaign. Which is our great hope that this can uh, get us back in the game. And that our opponent doesn't draw particularly well. So they fire off the trophy. They have no interest in the campaign of disinformation. Let's hope we can find another. We find a Sinister Sabotage. I think that's a good enough reason to hold back and take some damage and keep the counter available. And we will counter pretty much anything at this point, since we're in pretty cold waters. Definitely at risk of flooding out, but a Dream Eater is an excellent draw here. So I will sit on that, and wait for my opponent to attack me. Here comes the Dream Eater. That can go, all the land can go. The Fungal Infection is good against the um, Lanoir Elf, and Search for His Kanta is great, so I'll keep those. I'm going to bounce the Lanoir Elf and block the Seeker Squire. Lanoir Elf returns. Wild Growth Walker with no friends returns. Just the way we like it. Now, I think it's best if we start attacking our opponent. I might still use this Discovery Dispersal to bounce the Wild Growth Walker and make the opponent discard it. In fact, that doesn't even sound bad, because right now if I one for one, meaning I use one spell to kill one of my opponent's spells, if I do that every turn for the rest of the game, I should be okay because of Search for His Kanta. And if the Wild Growth Walker can't go off, hallelujah. Oh, there was a Jade Light Ranger right on top of the deck too. Oh, Assassin's Trophy. Well, the Assassin's Trophy wants to take out the Ascanta, I imagine. But if I keep the Dream Eater back... Hmm. Let's see what we get with the Ascanta right away. What we really want now is another engine. Uh, negate. Ah, yes. Unfortunate to show that to the opponent. Let's keep uh, the race going. Try to get him dead. Here is a fungal infection to kill an elf. And then our 1 1 will block the Jade Light Ranger. Or try to. And they could have trophied it, but I don't think that's where they want to be. Another Fungal Infection off the top is pretty good. It can stall the Jade Light Ranger for another turn while our Dream Eater tries to finish the job. And this time I'm going to leave the Iskanta activation available. Opponents holding the Assassin's Trophy, they do know about the Negate. But there is a risk they'll get bottlenecked on black mana because they only have two. All right. Let's go ahead and negate the Assassin's Trophy. Let's 
go ahead and fungal infect the Jade Light Ranger. And uh, we can say no blocks here, but the Sapperling can block the Ranger next turn. But of course, that doesn't work if our opponent has a Chupacabra, so I will block. And it says my turn. Let's use his Kanta. And we find a Vraska's Contempt, a Disinformation Campaign, and a Ritual of Soot. Um, I like the Disinformation Campaign. I know that our, we're up against a Jade Light Ranger. I'm confident I can find other ways to kill the Ranger. We only have so many engine cards in our deck, and Disinformation ca Campaign is certainly an important one. Even if our Dream Eater dies, we can keep getting further and further ahead with that. And we make them discard Vivian Reed. Wow. They wanted to get the negate out of our hand for that purpose. All right, we need one more attack. We can play the land and we can use Discovery Dispersal. Dispersal will take out the Jade Light Ranger. And it leaves our opponent with one draw step to keep from dying. Can they do it? They draw a Ravenous Chupacabra, they can do it. So we're going to have to try a little harder to finish this game. A Thief of Sanity can certainly help. So top decks for top decks. The kind of magic people get excited watching. I will not block, and I also will not search with it as Connie yet. I want to see my opponent's last card. And it's a land, okay. Because I might have been in a case where I'd want to search for his Kanta to get a counter spell or something of that nature. It didn't line up that way anyway, but you like having your options in close games like this. Jade Light Rangers. And I think it's the play. Oh yes, library. And we could draw this and play it this turn. Since we know we're going to play it anyway. We could either use search to do it or we could thought erasure. I think I'll save the Thought Erasure, though. There might be better time. Ooh, I guess an Essence Scatter is even better, so I'll take the Essence Scatter. It keeps a Chupa or something from further extending the game. And that will do it. Win number six. Keep the gold coming. Here on quest day, Monday. Always has the most quests because I use I take the weekend off from using the the free to play account. Alrighty then. Sweet. Sweet little assortment of cards. On the play, I, I'm worried about it not being fast enough, but on the play, those uh, fears are not as, not as... not as realized as often. Oh boy. We have to go through a Teferi deck? It seems we might. And they have a gateway on too. Yeah. Our odds of winning just plummeted brutally. They have a card selection spell, and we do not. If we had our own Argyle's Bloodfast or a Disinformation Campaign, I'd feel differently, but I'm all creature removal right now. So now we have to decide how long to stay on this quest. I guess I can work on my playing lands quest, although my killing creatures and attacking with creatures is unlikely to go anywhere. Yep, I've got nothing. I guess we could still draw Neza Hall right at turn 7 and maybe make a show of this. Our opponent's sitting on nothing. 
I don't know why. Kids are yelling at them or something. How, lo how much roping do we take from a Jessica control player? Well, the best hopes in this game are to draw the counter spells. We do have a sabotage, but we're much better off with disinformation campaign and Argyle's Bloodfast. Um, search for his Kanta, drawing some of those to outcard our opponent, make sure that we're hitting land drops, and of course the Neza Hall. If we find the Neza Hall, things could be all kinds of interesting, but I'm, I'm losing faith in the top of my deck to deliver at this stage. Our opponent's already getting to loot multiple times and set up probably with many counter spells and planeswalkers. Murmuring Mystic, well there's one you don't see all the time. If they rely on creatures in any capacity, this might not be a complete joke of a game because cards like Essence Scatter can stop them. But the huge mana advantage from the gateway is just so hard to overcome. Drawing a Dispersal would help with that too as we could force them to reset the gateway. But right now our hand is just so useless. It's hard to be optimistic. Let's see if they find another varied casting cost. Um, that's another land, so that doesn't put them closer to flipping it. It also reveals that they might be having some flood issues, which would be good for us, because we have them too. There's a Lava Coil. That's a different uh, casting cost. Also, if Dream Eater could resolve, it could also mess with the gateway. But we have drawn... Have we drawn all lands? I think I might have kept a hand that was four, four lands and these three spells. So I think I've drawn Essence Scatter and one, two, three, four, five, six land off the top of my deck. If we were going to have that terrible of a draw, let's get it over with, am I right? So shall we start a fight over the campaign? I guess. We'll probably lose the fight, though. But I think we have to try. I think trying is the only thing for us. Oh, what's going on here? Yeah, I'll keep a disdainful stroke. Hmm, I wonder why they cleared the stack first. Because they might have drawn into another counter spell. So the wreckage is a four, but so was Murmuring Mystic. And we resolved our disinformation campaign. Hope springs eternal, my friends. So what's under here? A two, a four, and a one. So they still have at least two activations before they can flip this and try to burn me into oblivion. Murmuring Mystic. Uh, let's fight. Let's Essence Scat you. Best to use the spell that can counter a creature as compared to, compared to the Disdainful Stroke that can counter to Fairy or a Burn spell. It's a three drop they just put under there. So one more activation, and they have a gateway. And I have a Thief of Sanity. I wonder if they saved any removal for it. Or if they looted it away. That could make a huge difference. We've seen them get rid of Settle the Wreckages, Lava Coils, Deafening Clarions. But what they have in their hand, if it's not counter spells, must be some kind of removal. Oh, Revitalize. Well, that's fine too. That might just draw into being more land. You don't know. It's a mystery card, really. There are four cards. They have four cards. We have three. Clarion. Yep. No more sanity. D 
do they flip? Do they find... Oh, they found an opt. They do flip. They do have a bajillion mana. Let's see what they do with it. Do they actually have a use for a bajillion mana is another question. It looks tapped. It actually untaps after you flip it. It just uh, takes a minute. I think I should save my Disdainful Stroke. Although, if I don't fight over this... If my opponent does have a counter spell, then the Raskus Contempt gets countered, then I'm ice cold. So I do have to fight over Ral here to make sure it gets through a counter. I've been through worse. All right. Essence Scatter is probably not what we need, but I guess we'll see. Now our opponent could just fireball me to death with a Banefire, but they don't appear to have that yet. Our ability to draw lands has been amazing. We're up to 11 now. Thanks to the, thanks, thankfully the opponent's answering, but we also keep drawing our removal spells, not our thought erasures, not our surveil cards. It's a, it's a mess. It is a mess. All the removal spells in the top of the deck. And then our opponent found their Teferi. Me later. Vrask is contempted as quickly as we can. No time for a break. And if they have expansion explosion or bane fire, it's gonna be glorious. And I don't really have a way around that other than hoping they don't draw it. They get their Teferi activated ability because they did plus the Teferi. Oh, okay. If you're gonna do it, just do it, please. They can make a lot of mana. If you have a if you have a way to use it, please get it over with. Wish that they had the option. Right click, reveal this card to the opponent. Just get it over with. And there it is. And there were cards that matter all at the bottom of the deck. It looked like we still had a long way to go before we even drew a surveil card to go with our disinformation campaign. That was... That, left, that leaves a sour taste in my mouth. Let's see if we can wash it out with a seventh win, though. At least we get one more chance. You should be happy anytime you get four wins or more because you earn more cards than you would have grinding on ladder. It's just so hard. So hard when it's right there. You just want to win. You want the, the W. You want the trophy. Not that you actually get a trophy. But here we are against Teferi again. For as much as people like comment on the internet how much they hate Teferi, think it should be banned, despise the card, they sure do use the avatar a lot. Like, there are more Teferi avatars, I think, than any other in the game. And it's another Jeskai control deck, huh? Fun. Oh, fun. It's probably... Probably the worst matchup. We have to have like a perfect draw early to do anything against these decks. And we have anything but that going on, but there's a Bloodfast, which I can play next turn. But I do need to make sure that I draw my lands. So I'm gonna bin this other Discovery Dispersal. Although I guess it's better than a removal spell. All right, we'll fight for it. The problem here is we don't have a way to stop our opponent if they just turn five to ferry us. 
but we gotta go for this. There's no question. It's our best chance. And it resolves, okay? Life is all right. Chemistry's insight. So they either don't have a counter spell or they're planning to slam a planeswalker here. And then protect it with counter spells. Capland, they don't have it. We got a chance. We just want to draw as many cards as possible. Although our life total being cut down can get us killed later. We do just need to draw a lot of cards. Let's see if they have a counter for search for his Kanta. All right, I'm not going to fight through the Iskanta. I'm going to save the negate for a Teferi, hopefully. I'm gonna to try to bait them into tapping out for Teferi here. But we're missing land, and two missed land drops can be lethal. Okay, they're not going for it. Yes, finally. Okay, stick a disinformation campaign at them. See if they want to counter that. Yep. Again, I'm not going to fight over these. I'm going to make sure that Teferi doesn't resolve. The Bloodfast can gain me enough advantage to stay in the game, but I need to negate to fairies and the um, expansion explosions. Big burn spells. Uh, okay. I don't have an easy way to kill that right now, which is kind of weird. Kind of a funky one to have in there. Cast Down doesn't do it because it's legendary, but Dead Weight can slow it down. Double Dead Weight can kill it. took care of that. And two cards I wasn't going to use, most likely anyway. I'll play the untapped land so I still have four mana available. I could discover into my deck, but I think the dispersal side might be more relevant in the matchup. It depends. We'll see what happens. Lyra. It's a big, big Lyra. Let's see if we draw into Essence Scatter. Now would be the time. All those cards we had last game. All right. We're gonna have to get Lyra dead. Looks like we're up against some kind of a Jeskai Angels type strategy. Bizarre. What do we got? Nine cards? I can discard these two. Doesn't look like Cast Down is going to kill anything in this matchup. I could play Doom Whisperer, I just don't trust it to resolve. Oh, okay. I miscounted. I had eight, not nine. I take two to have the mana available. Let's try a Dispersal. And they do pick up their Lyra. And they discard their Lyra. They must have another. Ah, they want to go for Teferi. We'll see if they brought an Ionize as well. They do now have enough mana to do both. Syncopate. Ouch. I'm 
No, Look how happy I they are. Show remorse. I'll show restraint. All right. And they have mana available. Ouch. Well, we could try for a Doom Whisper. The opponent might not have the removal, but they can just a fairy minus it. So that's not impressive or anything. Let's try for a disinformation campaign instead. Attack their hand. Another Lyra bites the dust. Let's discovery. Try to find a way to kill the Teferi and play another disinformation campaign. Oh, a thought erasure, but I just lost my way to bounce it, so. But that could be really helpful. When we do decide it's time for Teferi to die. Ouch. Okay. Down to one card. We're fighting, but I don't like you know it. I'm not done yet. It's gonna be really annoying if I log in to play this and I lose two straight games to these decks. Also, this Shalai Angel thing. Ugh. So obnoxious. More land. Not good enough. We found the land. It was very late. Extremely late to the party. We can't thought erasure our opponent as long as the Shalai is on the battlefield. Wow. Just wow. Very ugly stretch here for the deck. Don't know what draws we need. They just definitely didn't happen this time. Bloodfast couldn't keep up on land for a while there, and then when we did hit the land pocket, we couldn't keep up with the creatures, which is really obnoxious. Keeping up with the creatures should be something we can do with the deck. Did they draw another counter spell? Not yet. They were going for lethal with that Lyra. It would have pumped the Shalai to a four. That's why we had to kill it. Down to one. All right, transform. Draw Vraska's Contempt. See if we can resolve a Doom Whisper. Yes, we can. Let's see, we can't target to fairy, it's got protection because of the Shalai. So let's take out the Shalai if we can. We try the Doom Whisperer first, of course, because we very much want our opponent to counter it if they have a counter. Well, it's gone. And our opponent has a Teferi on seven. Let's Thought Erase them. More Syncopation, all right. Let's well, they don't mind us to get rid of the Doom Whisperer, so they either have a way to kill it or they are very to fairy ambitious. Another Shalai. The Shalai Lyra spam is pretty frustrating, to be honest. It doesn't feel like I should have so much trouble killing some creatures, but I feel like I just don't have it today. Don't know what's going on. Feels like I have the cards, and they just don't materialize on my deck. All right. My turn. Let's use the Doom Whisperer, because we have to hit here. We have to hit something good. None of those do. Draw. Gotta go after Teveri. Don't have a choice on that one. Damage. 
As soon as I think of one. Jeez, oh, Pete, what is going on? Our opponent only drew a million cards. So we have Temple to sacrifice Doom Whisper so that we don't die. But we don't have a way to get more cards. Hold that thought. There's no way to surveil and pay life and then gain it, so that's just that. I guess I shouldn't um, essence scatter that since it's finally something I could cast down. Maybe they have another. Yep. Okay. In response, oh, it has hexproof. I can't cast it down anyway. Dream Eater. Interesting. I should probably try this now. If I don't now, the opponent could draw a counter spell. If they have a counter spell anyway, I should wait till their upkeep, I guess. Okay. And we'll see if they have the Essence Scatter. Not yet. Make it good. None of this is good. Unbelievable. All the resolve. Take action. Go away. Maybe we can even get the Teferi to target the Dream Eater with the minus. And I'll say fine. I could sack it for life. I could sack it for life. I'm sure my this means my opponent has another Teferi though. But let's see. I want them to pump the Angel and go for the lethal. That's what I want them to do. It's six mana. It takes up a good amount of their ability for the turn. That, that does something too. Just Sky Angels, my friends. Don't know what I could draw now. Oh, I had to respond to that. Oh well. Fitting end as we got freaking destroyed. But I should be happy about six wins in a free-to-play deck, especially with an off-meta deck like blue-black control. I do think I do consider it off-meta at this point. It doesn't put up big finishes hardly ever. Niv. Well, that's something for the blue-red deck anyway. This is junk, but the 800 gold I should be happy about. Okay, I'm gonna call it for the day. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.